Materials used in this presentation are period in nature and used for educational and entertainment purposes. Furthermore, videos have been used in conjunction with the photographs to produce continuity, in some instances are composites, and fall within the purview of the fair use doctrine of U.S. copyright laws. Attributions are given when required. Welcome to A Moment in Crime a feature vignette presented by the True Crime Man's Dark Imagination YouTube channel. If you've enjoyed this presentation or any other presentation on this channel, please hit like, subscribe, and hit the bell in order to receive notifications on any further offerings on this channel. A highly respected nurse is recommended for a position at the prestigious Massachusetts General Hospital in 1889. Although her references had been checked, something strange about this new angel of mercy seemed to follow her wherever she went. What the administrators at the hospital later discovered regarding their new hire sent shivers down the spines of medical professionals and the populace alike. It seemed that wherever her employee took her, Patients in her charge, mysteriously, died. The nurse, Jane Toppin, was born Honora Kelly in Boston, Massachusetts in 1857. Her mother died of tuberculosis when Honora was very young, and her father, Peter Kelly, suffered from alcoholism and eccentricities that found him labeled as a crack, short for crackpot. Eventually, Peter suffered various lapses of sanity until finally, while working at a tailor shop, rumor had it that he sewed his eyelids shut. In 1863, unable to care for his children, Peter brought six-year-old Honora and nine-year-old Delia Josephine to the Boston Female Asylum, which functioned as an orphanage ever since 1799. The two girls would never see their father again. Records appear scant concerning Honora and Delia Josephine's time at the asylum, but in November 1864, Honora was placed as an indentured servant in the home of Mrs. Anna C. Toppin of Lowell, Massachusetts. Although the Toppin family never formally adopted her, Honora assumed the family surname and later became known as Jane Toppin. Toppin hated her foster mother and treated her foster sister, Elizabeth, with quieted disdain. Toppin envied her foster sister that she would get married one day. Sadly, Delia Josephine remained in the asylum and eventually drifted into prostitution and alcoholism, dying in squalid conditions. Toppin developed a personality that seemed gregarious to people around her, including her schoolmates. She often lied and lied big stating that she was not Irish, although clearly she had been born to an Irish family. Because she felt as though she would never marry, Toppin gained weight and became very plump by her late teens. In 1874, the Toppin family released the servant from her duties and granted her a $50 stipend as stipulated in the indentured servitude contract. Toppin stayed on at the Toppin residence until the foster sister married a young deacon in the local church. Although Toppin exhibited a concealed animosity toward Elizabeth Toppin, now Brigham, Elizabeth remained kind to her foster sister. In 1885, Toppin began training as a nurse at Cambridge Hospital. Toppin grew in popularity, so much so, that the patients referred to her as Jolly Jane. However, her colleagues did not share the same admiration and or like for the young, plump angel of mercy. She was perceived as a devious gossip that repeatedly lied about her background. If Toppin liked a patient, she doctored their charts or gave them small doses of medicine to keep them there. Early in her career, 
the newly trained nurse conducted experiments on patients with such strong painkillers as morphine and atropine used to treat poisonings to judge their tolerance for the drugs. In altering the prescribed dosages, Toppin wanted to observe the reactions of her experiments on the patients. Toppin also developed a habit of laying in the bed with her patients as they lay recovering from surgery or languishing from some terminal illness. One person who survived Toppin's care, Mrs. Amelia Finey, recovered from surgery in her room and thought that Toppin came into her room, crawled into bed with her, and kissed all over her face before being startled away. When Finey regained consciousness the next day, she thought it was all a dream until she read in the papers that Toppin had been arrested for murder. Toppin would later state that this gave some sort of sexual gratification, but there were never any indicators that she had sex with the patients. To throw suspicion away from her, Toppin falsified charts and even doctored medical records to make it appear that the patients were sicker than they appeared. This appeared quite rare because female serial killers, according to modus operandi in the past, murder for financial gain and not sexual satisfaction. Because she impressed several of the doctors at Cambridge Hospital, despite the thoughts that her colleagues possessed about her, Toppin went on to further training at Massachusetts General Hospital, where more patients died mysteriously under her care. But suspicions never materialized right away. In 1890, after breaking an important rule of leaving the ward without permission, suspicions arose and the hospital fired her. Working a short stint as a private nurse, Toppin returned to Cambridge Hospital, but administrators learned that Toppin had been prescribing opiates freely to patients. Seeing as her career in public sector deprived her of any further victims, Toppin went to work as a private nurse, despite several complaints of her stealing. When Toppin was not poisoning her charges, she relished in killing those she encountered in her personal life as well. In 1895, it seemed that Toppin accelerated her murderous behavior. In that year, she poisoned Israel Dunham because she claimed he was feeble and fussy. Toppin moved in with the old man's widow, poisoning her not too long after. And in 1899, she killed her foster sister, Elizabeth Toppin Brigham, with a dose of strychnine. Toppin requested that Oramel Brigham, Elizabeth's bereaved husband, give the nurse his wife's gold watch and chain. Oramel obliged, only later to find out that Toppin pawned the watch and chain. On December 29, 1901, Toppin poisoned Mary McClear after the elderly woman's doctor recommended Toppin as a private nurse. Toppin then stole some of the elderly woman's clothes from her closet. Historians thought the murder of McClear odd because Toppin usually killed people she knew personally. Toppin never became acquainted with the matronly McClear. On February 11, 1900, Toppin poisoned her childhood friend, Myra Connors, with some strychnine to take over her position as a dining matron at a theological school. When Toppin started her new job, colleagues did not take kindly to her, often questioning whether she was qualified to do the job. When the theology school was not in session, Toppin worked at the mess hall for the biological school at Woods Hall, Massachusetts. In November of 1900, the theological school dismissed Toppin because of complaints from her co-workers and financial irregularities. In 1901, Maddie Davis, an old friend of Toppin's, died under Toppin's care at the Cambridge Hospital after being under her care for seven days. Toppin accompanied the body home for burial to Katomet. While there, the Davis family hired her to care for their elderly parents, Mr. and Mrs. Davis. Toppin moved in and mysteriously, Mrs. Davis died first, and then Mr. Davis succumbed to a long illness as well. While working for the Davises, Toppin resorted to arson, having lit a few fires while there. Fortunately, neighbors saw the smoke and extinguished the flames before any real damage had been done. No one suspected the plump nurse to be the culprit at the time, even though she managed to poison the last Davis daughter, Minnie Gibbs, in August of 1901. In addition to the elderly couple, two of their daughters also died under mysterious circumstances. 
Toppin then moved back to her hometown of Lowell, Massachusetts, and began courting the husband of her late foster sister. Toppin poisoned Ora Mel Brigham's sister, Edna Bannister, because Toppin perceived she stood in the way of the marriage. Toppin then poisoned her new beau so that she could prove she could nurse him back to health. Toppin even ingested poison to deflect suspicion away from herself and even gain some sympathy. Fortunately, the suitor discovered her ruse and removed her from his home. When Toppin returned to Lowell, the father-in-law of Minnie Gibbs, Captain Gibbs, requested that a famous toxicologist at the time, Leonard Wood, exhume the bodies of the Davises and test them for any poisons. Captain Gibbs' hunch was right. The Davis family, acting on their suspicions about their former private nurse, ordered a toxicology report on Alden Davis. The report confirmed their suspicions that he had, in fact, been poisoned. Local authorities shadowed Toppin for a few days and then finally arrested her for the murder of Alden Davis and Minnie Gibbs in Amherst, New Hampshire on October 26, 1901. At her arraignment, Toppin pled not guilty. Authorities strongly believed that they had their murderer, but other than Alden Davis and Minnie Gibbs, they could not connect her to any of the other victims. One of the problems the prosecution faced was that the embalming fluid used on some of the victims before burial contained arsenic. Therefore, their bodies contained high levels and confounded authorities as to whether they had been poisoned or merely their tissues absorbed the preservative. However, when they determined that Toppin's chosen poisons, morphine and atropine, could be detected in addition to arsenic without skewing the results of the toxicology, they exhumed the Davis family bodies and then charged Toppin with four counts of murder. She again pled not guilty. In 1902, Toppin confessed to the murder of over 31 people. On June 23, 1902, a jury found Toppin not guilty by reason of insanity and committed her for life to the Taunton Insane Hospital. Jane Toppin died there on August 17, 1938. If one day her total victims can be confirmed, Toppin would stand as one of the top serial killers in U.S. history. This has been A Moment in Crime. If you've enjoyed this presentation or any other presentation on this channel, please hit like, subscribe, and hit the bell in order to receive notifications on any further offerings on this channel.